Hello folks uh, and welcome to this tutorial in July 2021. We are about to release ISP Manager version 6 and I am updating the installation video tutorial to match that. Um, what you can see in front of you here is our ISP Manager website if you haven't seen it before. The two things I just want to highlight on it is that this video and other videos relating to installation and upgrading can be found right here in the main menu. And the second thing I want to highlight is that when you've installed ISP Manager, we have a huge amount of video tutorials for the next steps. And particularly once you've completed the installation, which is the video you're watching now, uh, you should move on to the first steps uh, on all about upgrading ISP Manager. So um, installing ISP Manager, we, we, we have documentation for this and you'll find it on docs.ispmanager.org. And in particular, under installation, there's an introductory page, uh, but the main thing is this automated script. And this is what we're going to be following now. The, the reason that we have written the automated script is that over the years, we found that people were having trouble with the documentation because quite often the documentation is written by ourselves and, and we're very used to the installation process. Um, and we, we quite often gloss over some steps that some people might might find more difficult. So at least with the videos, you can see exactly what we're doing. You can pause these, you can rewind them, you can fast forward them, uh, and hopefully you, you'll get the, the full effect of being able to install XP Manager with as much ease as, po as possible. Um, the installation script, we hope, makes it really easy. And, and, and just to note that as I'm going through these pages, these all relate to version five because I'm preparing this video in advance of the release and we haven't updated the content yet, but I want to use the real pages so that you know where I'm looking. So the, the available installation scripts can be found on this page. And when we click through to that, uh, what you've, what, again, as I said, this relates to version five. So I'm just going to switch to the release V6 branch. You won't need to do this because these will all be in the master branch when we release the video. Uh, what you'll find is that there's one script. We removed, we've moved all the older stuff into legacy so that there's, there's even less confusion. Um, so the ISP Manager installation scripts, we we very much recommend you install this on Ubuntu. And at the time of writing, we recommend you install it on Ubuntu 2004, the LTS long-term support version. You of course ISP Manager will run on, on you know any operating system stack that supports PHP version 8, that supports uh, Nginx or Apache, uh, and that supports MySQL. But what what we what how we run it internally in Linux and what we recommend is you run it in Ubuntu LTS twenty oh four because that will get you there uh, the easiest way possible. Um, so the first thing we have to do is prepare a virtual machine. Uh, now you can you know you can use VMware, you can use Zen Server uh, at Linux. We've started using XCPNG an awful lot. Uh, XC, XCP. XCPNG is a great Zen server based uh, system. Uh, some people prefer KVM and so on. So the, it'll run on any virtual virtual platform that will support Ubuntu Linux. Um, for the demonstration purpose here, I'm going to run it on VirtualBox, which is a desktop based hypervisor uh, from Sun Microsystems. So I'm going to create a brand new virtual machine. We just call it uh, install demo. Uh, it's going to be a Linux system and it's going to be Ubuntu 64 bit. I don't think these actually make any difference besides changing the icon and, 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 and set a few default settings. So memory size, you know, if you're a small exchange starting off, two gigs of RAM is more than sufficient. In general, four gigs of RAM will, will, will be, will get you you know, for any size IXP really that's using it up to a couple of hundred members. You, uh, you might need to go higher to eight gig maybe if you go beyond a couple of hundred members. The, the main uh, memory usage right now is creating uh, root server configurations where you have a large number of members and where some of those members uh, have a huge amount of prefix lists. We're gonna try and optimize that in future versions, but for now, that's the main source of memory. So on my own system here, I don't need anything like that. I'm just gonna go with 1024. Going to create a virtual hard drive so you know for for your own purposes um 
I, in fact, let, let me do it the way I'd recommend doing it. So uh, I'm going to put this in as sporty here, right? So typically what I would recommend is 10 gigs for your for your root and file system and then 30 gigs for slash server with Product Suite Manager. So I'll actually do it that way as we go through the demo here. Um, okay, that's happening. Okay, so here's my demo. So I'm just gonna go into the settings here for a second. So what, what wasn't I asked in the setup? Um, storage i've done my storage so i need to attach i need to attach my ubuntu iso so for that i, I went to ubuntu.com went to download chose get ubuntu server chose the manual server installation and then i downloaded this iso here so i've already done that in advance so we're not waiting on it so i'm going to attach and it you can see it's it's already found it i i normally do choose a disk file i'd go into downloads and there is my Ubuntu 20.04 live server. So we're going to attach that. It's giving me a problem here. What's the problem? It's giving me a warning here. I'm not sure what that relates to. Let's just try it one more time. All right, we'll, we'll see how it, how it works out. Um, the next thing is gonna be your network and that's gonna entirely depend on your own system. Uh, I'm going just on my own system here. I'm just going to put put this this uh, virtual machine on my own local network, so it's going to be a bridge adapter. When you're thinking about this for your own IX, um, you're going to want to have um, an internal management network, um, and and that is where you might be able to have access to different servers. For example, you may put your graph collection on a different server. You may put smoking on a different server. You can put them all on the SP Manager server as well on, on a small to medium sized exchange. There's no issue with that. Uh, you'll, you'll want probably a public IP address from your own IX's management network where people will access the ISP Manager. Uh, and then you'll also want to put a, a network adapter onto your peering LAN if ISP Manager is going to uh, do is going to do things like smoke ping. So for smoke ping, you're going to want it's going to want to be able to ping all of your members routers on the peering LAN. So you'll want access to the peering LAN. Actually, manager will need access to your switches, and that's where your private management network comes into play. So it can do SNMP requests and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's mostly it. Um, the only thing I didn't look at was processor, um, or for the production version, I would probably give it to two CPU cores, just you know, for things like uh, creating root server configuration can be done in parallel to anyone accessing your system. So let's save that, let's start it up, and hopefully my ISO problem. So it's, it's giving me, so I'm gonna just pause recording here and just check my, my ISO download. Okay, and I'm back. I don't actually think there was any issue there. I think I could have just clicked okay. Um, I think it was just confused over, I, I ran through some other demos uh, for different things recently, and I think it was just confused because I downloaded a fresh ISO for this. So we're booting up, we're, we're booting in to the Ubuntu ISO. <clears throat> Let's just step through this process. So I'm gonna step through all of this in, in this video so you can see the decisions I make and I'll explain why I'm making certain decisions particularly around, you know, uh, hard drive configuration and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, from my own location, I am in Ireland. So my layout will be English UK and I'm using a Mac. So that's the only reason I'm selecting those. So I've got an IP address on my local network. That's fine. It's dot one three four. Just remember that. I'll just make a note of it. Uh, I won't be using a proxy. It's going to access the internet directly. That will be my mirror. So I'm going to um, do a custom storage layout just to, just to walk through the process. So I have a 40 gig hard drive here, effectively. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to add 
a uh, one gig boot partition. You could put that into LVM and stuff. When you have server issues, it's quite it's quite often easier to have the boot partition uh, not encumbered by having any underlay file system, just having it as a as a plain standard um, uh, um, file system. So with the remaining space, um, I'm going to with the remaining space, I'm going to create a, a full sized. Oh, sorry, I want to create a, I want to create a, a LVM, a logical volume. Um, so that's my available devices. I have my free space. Uh, the option isn't highlighted to me for some reason. Used devices. Okay, reset. Uh, see what I'm missing here. So add a partition, maybe one gig, and format. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even drawn. So I'm going to create my boot partition again, and now I'm going to add another partition. This time I'm going to leave it unformatted, to full size, and with that I'm going to create a volume group. So I have VG0 spine, call it whatever you like. It's that partition, which is about 39 gigs. So that's my logical volume group. Now, what I want to do with that is create some uh, some logical volumes. So first logical volume I'm going to create is, I'm going to call this my system, or I'm going to call it root. It's going to be the root partition, basically. It's going to be 10 gigs in size, exe4 mounted and slash root. So I'm going to create that. Uh, you can, so I'm going to just create root and slash serve. So that's my second logical volume is going to be serve. It's going to be the full size X EXT four slash serve. So the, first of all, the reason for using volume groups is if I run out of hard drive space later, because I'm on a vert, because I'm on a virtual machine, I can add a second hard drive to this virtual machine and I can add that hard drive into my VG zero volume group. I can then extend any of these logical volumes. So I can extend, the, the root logical volume or the serve logical volume. And I can do that live with, while the system is running without interrupting services. So it gives me great flexibility to grow the system as I go along. Um, a lot of server hardening recommendations would have you create different volumes. So for example, keep slash root separate, keep slash var separate, keep slash home separate, keep slash user and user local separate. Uh, and that is, that is good advice. Um, it may be overkill in certain situations, and certainly for me, it's it's overkill for what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to go with just the two. I'm finished here now. I'm going to continue. So I'm just going to create an XP Manager account. I'm going to kick IP Manager password. So create your own user account as normal. So I'm going to install OpenSSH server. One nice thing with Ubuntu 20.04 is you can import your SSH identity from other systems. So your public key essentially. Uh, and I'm going to do that here, which is just going to make life much easier for me. I'm not going to install anything else at this point. Uh, and now it's going to go ahead and it's going to install the operating system. Uh, what I might do is just pause the video at this point. Uh, and uh, once this completes, or once I have to make any action, I'll unpause it and we'll continue from there. Okay, so that completed without any more intervention required. And what it also did was it installed all, it fully did a, it did a full update of the operating system as well for any latest packages and stuff. So I'm going to hit uh, reboot now. And I'm actually going to just catch it here in a second. So please remove the installation media, press enter, right. I'm just going to catch it here. I don't want it to boot up if I can avoid it. Oh, it has booted up. Okay. What I'm going to do is I, I need to create a second video for manual installation just to demonstrate that. But the, the process of manual installation to this point is the exact same. So once this uh, completes booting, which it has, uh, I am just going to find my virtual box and I'm going to 
uh, so ACPI shutdown should instruct the server to stop itself, which it has. So I'm going to clone it. Demo uh, or manual. <clears throat> I'm going to leave this in the video so that I can just explain to anyone looking at the manual instructions to refer back here. Uh, continue and do a linked clone, which means it's not going to copy the file system, it's just going to link it to this point in time. So I'm going to go back to this, I'm going to boot it back up again. Now, if we remember, I said that this was on my own local network, so I'm just going to log into it once it boots. So ISP manager, and I gave it a ISP manager password. So IP address. So I can see that the local network address here is still that 34. Okay. So I'm going to log in uh, to my shell here. Just it's a lot easier than trying to do this stuff on the console. And of course, my username here is IXP Manager app. Now, no password is required because if you recall, uh, it pulled my public key from GitHub, which uh, is really useful. Just going as root. All right. So we go back to the instructions now. So I've prepared my physical machine. I've attached the latest Ubuntu. I have followed the Ubuntu installers process. I installed SSH. I completed the installation. So now that when it's rebooted, I have logged in. I've changed to the root user. Now what I want to do is I want to get the installation script. So it's wget. And you'll be able to copy and paste this straight in. I have to come up here and copy this version because as you recall, I haven't put this in the master branch yet. So I need to take this out of the, re the release v6 branch. So, and in fact, that is not what I want. Uh, I need the raw version of this. So let me just click on this and get this link. So W get that raw version. So I now have this script. Ah, sorry, folks, I've I downloaded the wrong script. Uh, what I'm looking for is the raw version of this script. Oh. I'm going to install Joe because Joe is my favorite editor and uh, I don't want to get stuck in Vim like so many people do. And in fact, one thing I always do with Joe just so I don't leave all of these tilde files lying around as I disable backups. Okay. So here's my installation script. I don't need to read it. I'm just I'm just I'm just showing it to you that it is in fact here. So I have it. And what what the instructions tell me to do with this is once I've W get it is to just execute it. So IT Manager Installation Script. It's telling me that this is for Free Manager version 6 for Ubuntu LTS 20.04 only. That's really important. It should only be running a newly installed Ubuntu system. There are some checks to stop you from doing anything silly, but it just reminds you. Now, if you want to follow the process, open a new session and as root. So we will do that. I'm just going to open a new window here. Uh, let me make this big as well. Uh, that's kind of messed up my screen a bit. Let me just reset this. So on my other screen, SSH IXP manager app. Go to root and we'll tail that, that script so we can see what's happening. So what the script does is it's going to do an apt get update, apt get upgrade. So what, what it's trying to do is going to make sure that we're on the latest versions of everything. Uh, the installer did a chunk of this, so the installer should have covered most of this off for us. So hopefully we don't have to sit through too much here. Uh, looks like there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, but we've already downloaded them. Uh, luckily, I have a good internet connection here, and we're already installing them. So it's going to do that, and it's telling us in shorthand what it's doing here as it goes through the process. And then, as I say, we can tail this script to see all the output in longhand as well.
So I'd say we're getting there at this stage. No problem, just throwing in some blank lines into this to space it out for yourself. It's where it's it, we're just tailing it. Uh, hopefully now that we're at the kernel stage that we're there or thereabouts. And of course, you don't need to sit and watch this with me. You can just uh, on YouTube fast forward five seconds repeatedly. Okay, good. So what's it telling us it's doing now? We've done the full system upgrade, uh, generating some new panels. We now need to gather some information about your installation. So these details can be changed later. So just hitting enter will set the false. So it's going to ask you some from, for some various identity stuff. As it says, these details can be changed later. You should set them at this point to save yourself the, the heartache of trying to find it. But I'm just going to step through these and we're going to use the default values. So some city IXP, some city in some country, some uh, you know uh, documentation AS number. Uh, the AS number of your IXP, by the way, is not your root server or should not be your root server AS. So an, an IXP will generally have two AS numbers. It will have an AS number, for example, INX is 2128, which will be for its management address space and, and, and maybe for the root collector and things like that. It will have a separate AS number for the root servers, and that should be uh, unattached to anything besides the root servers. Uh, so what you're being asked for here is your own IX's AS number. Not email, not contact, the IXP website. Uh, and then the details for the first user. So I'm going to stick with the default here. Again, please set some, some stuff that would be uh, uh, appropriate for you. So we've done that. We're now installing PHP, Apache, MySQL, etc. Please be very patient. Uh, so some notes on this. What, what we're particularly doing is we're installing the, the, in fact, even if I show you in the website, so I have started, actually I can't show the website because I haven't put it live. Um, in fact, I can show you in the script. So where we are at this point in the script is we are here. We're installing uh, a load of packages. And particularly what we're installing is Apache for the web server. Uh, we're installing MySQL version 8 for the database. And what's different to the default um, Ubuntu 20.04, Ubuntu 20.04 comes with PHP 7.4. IXP Manager version 6 requires PHP version 8. It will not run in anything, anything older than that. So to make that work, what we're doing is we're installing Andres, which is sort of the default uh, PPA, Personal Package Archive for Ubuntu, uh, to install different versions of PHP. It's... It's super. Uh, it's a super uh, resource that Andre provides, and you should definitely go uh, and buy him a copy or a pint of Guinness. Uh, let me see. P P A O N T O E J. Here we go. So this is the this is the P P A itself that Andre Suri provides, uh, and definitely uh, please buy him a pint or a cup of coffee at the very least, um, because uh, his work here makes all of this possible. So we've. We've installed Apache MySQL, etc. We've cloned the XP Manager from uh, from the GitHub repository. Uh, we've created a password for the user. Uh, we've created the database for the users. Uh, we've created the configuration file. Now, what it's doing is it's running Composer to install all the PHP dependencies. So let's see how we're doing with that. I'm sorry, I don't know why we dropped down in size there, but I'll make it bigger. So we're installing uh, installing all of these. They're a good few, but not that many. So I'd say we're close to the end there. Uh, we're installing the no development packages uh, and only the distribution versions of them. Uh, sorry, I see what happened. Uh, the size reset for some reason. So let me make it bigger again so that you can see this much easier. So let me just scroll up. So we did in Composer, we generated the application key, which is something we need to do in a Laravel application. We set up the database. We created some database views, which are still required, but hopefully not for too long. Uh, we created the initial database entries, which are things like your I or DB sources, uh, your vendors, uh, and so on. 
We set up Apache and now it's saying, congratulations, your actually managed installation is complete and it can be accessed at. And this, it just pulled the IP address. So again, you know, you'd put your domain name on that and stuff like that. Let's see if it works. Great, so there is RXP Manager version six. Um, it's giving us the username because we didn't reset it and it's giving us a random password it created for our user. And we're in, so that's brilliant. Uh, it's telling us that the MySQL root password was set to this. Uh, and it's telling us that this information can be found here. Uh, and we should delete this file. So let's have a look what that looks like on the server. Okay. So in our root uh, slash root, we have our IT manager install details. Okay, so that's those details we just saw, including the MySQL root password. And it told us in our IXP manager, there's another file here. And that just stored um, some of the details you entered or had the option to enter, just in case the script crashed and we wanted to rerun it again, to save you having to re-enter them. But it also contains a copy of this information. So we should delete that file uh, as it's recommending, because we have this information the MySQL root password in our slash root. Uh, again, we just do that. We have it here. That file is only readable by root. Of course, you should put that off into a password manager and remove it from here as well. Uh, what else did it tell us to do? Uh, if you're going to use it in production, so edit the config file. You know, use a, fire, a firewall to front your server or install IP tables. Get your SSL certificate. And then it says complete the many features of IXP Manager. Actually, this URL is old, so I need to update that, which I'll do now in a, in a moment. Uh, the correct URL these days is, of course, docs.icpmanager.org. And uh, please tell us, yes, and that URL is old, so I'm also going to correct that. What, what it's saying is, please tell us you're using IXP Manager. And what that means is, please go to icpmanager.org, to the community, uh, where we show all the people who use XP Manager and we can add your IXP. So please fill out that form and tell us that you're using it. That would be really, really helpful. Now, the main thing you need to do at this point is, um, is continue on with the tutorials. So under support tutorials, so you've, you've installed using the automated script. Now what you want to do is the first steps, setting up your IXP and XP Manager. So that this next video tutorial will walk you through the next steps which we will find uh, sorry installation and post install steps so it will walk you through these various steps and, and, and talk you through the various features so that is the IC manager installed that's manager version 6 i hope you found this tutorial helpful and best of luck using it please let us know if you have any issues please let us know if you have any feedback on the video uh, and particularly you know you can give us a shout out uh, on twitter at ixp manager And you can give me a shout out at Barrio79. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much.